Hello guys, Pablo here. Welcome back to Random Access Projects. On today's video, we will talk about haptic user interfaces. And I will show you an example using, you guessed it, brushless motors. Now, some of you have already seen a video on my channel where I show a brief example of this haptic interface made with brushless motors. But today, I will reveal all the secrets behind. What I am about to share with you is something that I've been researching for the past three years, and I'm very proud of the results. There is no other place on the entire internet where this information is available. You heard it here first. But before we get into the details, let's talk a little bit about user interfaces so we're all in the same channel. And to do so, I will use one of my favorite products of all time. This is the Bang & Olufsen Biosound Century, a stereo from 1993. Its looks are superb, elegant, and so different to other products from that decade. The Biosound Century was described as a clever combination of excellent performance and ease of use. It would play music from CDs and also from cassettes. In my case, I removed the cassette mechanism to make room for a smartphone, so I could play music directly from the cloud. I will save the details of this modification for a future video. But how can this product be described as easy to use? It has over two dozen buttons, all with the same shape and arranged in a cluster with no clear hierarchy. Well, that's what I find fascinating about this user interface. It's really clever the way it works. To see it, we first need to get access to the buttons, as they are protected by a glass cover. So stretch your hand towards the cover and the stereo will detect it and slide the glass door open. Cool, huh? Now we are granted access to the 26 buttons. And if you noticed, something happened with the buttons. Some of them, the ones that are relevant, light it up. So initially, we only get four options, CD, tape, radio, or auxiliary. After you press the CD button, music from the CD starts playing and the relevant buttons for CD mode will light up. Anyone can figure out how to operate the system thanks to this awesome user interface, which is intuitive and easy to use. Now, let's say we want to adjust the bass and treble. We press the sound button and we toggle to this symbol, which is a low bar referring to the low frequencies. You can adjust in 10 levels, from minus five to five. Next option is treble, and you guessed it, it's a high bar, alluding, of course, to the high frequencies. <laughs> Clever. If you like this user interface, you should check out the BioCenter 9000. Also made by Bang & Olufsen, this stereo dates back to 1986. It was one of the first stereos to use microcontrollers and capacitive sensors. Its user interface is pretty cool and futuristic, consisting of black mirror glass sheets that light up when touched gently, presenting possible functions that emerge only when they are needed. Now that we understand the importance of these physical user interfaces, let's talk about how to involve brushless motors into the equation. In my previous video, I showed you how a brushless motor in closed loop configuration with absolute position tracking can feel like a torsion spring when twisted. This feeling is created by the proportional control, which increases the torque as we move the rotor away from its set point. If we pretend the motor is a knob and focus on the feeling of operating this knob, we quickly realize that this could be used to interact with the product. For example, the steering on a remote car controller, in which the force could be varied electronically to make the knob harder or softer, and even produce some force back, like mentioned on my steer by wire video. So the driver could get input from what's happening in the actual car through the remote. After realizing the potential brushless motor have for haptic interfaces, my question then was, can I create more interesting interactions by modulating the torque as I interact with the rotor? And the answer is yes. Here's a simple and easy demonstration. Take the code from the last video. Now assign a constant value to the EPOS variable and run it. The coils will energize to that electrical position 
and not change with the rotation, creating the feeling of steps or mechanical positions along the rotation. Try it. You can also adjust the torque variable to affect how hard these bumps or notches actually feel. Now, the number of these steps or positions will match the number of poles in your brushless motor. In my case, it's 11 poles, so I get 11 positions in this configuration. I later developed an approach that can create more or less than the default 11 positions. To do this, I create a dynamic magnetic field that rotates at different rates than the rotor. So it's not fixed as in the example we just saw, but it moves as I move the rotor. It just doesn't move at the same rate. This creates what I can only describe as interference. And to understand how this works, I made this analogy. Picture the following. You have a stationary disk with, let's say, 11 red dots. And you do one rotation looking down at this stationary disk. You would then see 11 dots. Now, what would happen if, as you rotate, the disk started rotating in the opposite direction? then you would see more bumps. If it's moving against you at the same speed as you are moving against it, then you would see twice as many bumps, in this case, 22 bumps. Now, if the direction changes and it moves away from you, then you will see less bumps, depending on how fast it's moving away from you. This is just an analogy. In reality, what I'm doing is tricking the hardware to think the rotor is moving faster or slower than it really is, which creates a magnetic field that is temporarily out of phase with the rotor and produces torque. Then, as the phase catches up, the torque is zero again. Overcoming this temporary torque is perceived as a bump. Another thing we can do is play with the intensity of the fields as a function of the rotor position. This would be the equivalent of modifying the profile of the magnetic field and would affect the feeling of the bump. We can suddenly de-energize the motor to give the effect of sharper teeth. or attenuate the field everywhere except in a certain place to create effects of a unique notch. This has so much potential for fun stuff. And by fun stuff, I mean, look at all these devices with physical user interfaces, so much industrial design and so much potential for game-changing technology. Now, speaking about games, Let's focus on video game controllers. Imagine you're Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption. You stop your horse and go fishing for that legendary fish. As you reel in the fish, the joystick produces repeated fine notches that you can feel and remind you how a fishing rod feels when winding it up. As the fish fights back, the joystick increases the torque against your finger in jerking motions, giving a whole new dimension to your experience. That would be a cool technology to have in your controller. Now, you're Ellie in The Last of Us and you're opening a safe, but you don't have the code. So normally, you would depend on the sound coming from the safe style. Now, as you rotate the joystick, you feel that one particular notch on the dial that is different from all others. And voila, you open the safe and you win all the loot. Now, I will show you an integration of some of the routines shown in this and other of my videos. To make it easy to understand, I will pretend the interface belongs to a device that could be the love child of Spotify and a Bang & Olufsen stereo. So we would need the following controls. Volume, Song, Bass, Treble, and Balance. The way I design my interface requires a knob, which is powered by the brushless motor, and also a button to toggle between the settings we want to adjust. 
For this, I would also need some LEDs to show which setting is being adjusted. I will pretend they are here. You may think it would be better if the knob itself could be pressed in, which is an option I'd also like to look into, but for the moment I kept them separate. When you power your system, the knob all of a sudden rotates and gets to a point where it stops. The light for volume lights up. As you turn the knob, the volume goes up or down. As you reach the maximum or minimum values, you feel a progressive force on your finger, sending the knob back to a position within the allowed range. This is something you have never experienced before, a knob that is soft at the touch, but all of a sudden communicates to you what are the limits that are not to be exceeded. You then release the knob to press the next button and you notice the knob rotates from the previous last position to a new position and then it stops. The LED for a song lights up. As you turn the same dial, you realize now that it isn't soft as it was before. Instead, it now has notches. As you overcome the first notch, the song that was playing skips and a new one begins. You do it again and a new song starts. You like the previous better, so you go back. Now you press next again and the LED for bass lights up. As you move the knob, you now notice the notches are stronger and wider, transmitting the essence of the setting you are adjusting. When you toggle to the treble setting, you feel the notches are fine and crisp. Next one more time and you arrive at balance. Here, the knob lies in the middle, and as you rotate it, you realize there is a notch where it was resting. As you rotate past the notch, the knob moves unrestricted and smoothly. Now, it's sending the music towards one of the two speakers. And also, you can feel the limits. When you go back to the middle, the notch lets you know you have reached the 50-50 point. This is the last adjustment you can do. As you press next, or just leave the panel unattended, it goes back to the default, which is volume. Pretty cool, huh? But wait, there's more. As you cycle through your options again, you may notice the knob is not only the control for that setting, but it's also the indicator. You can actually see the values for the settings as you toggle through the options. It might take you a couple seconds to understand the workings, but it's so much fun to fiddle with the knob, it feels like you're playing with a device, so engaging learning how to use it. I really can't wait to see what you guys will do with this information and what products will come out in the market using these interfaces. If you already know of some, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. I will be uploading some more videos soon, so stay tuned and see you next time.